الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, I wanted to comment on that which is taking place with regards to our brothers and sisters um, uh, in Palestine uh, and I know a lot of people may have the question on their mind why why uh, are they going through the hardship that they're going through what uh, perhaps may be the divine wisdom of Allah Azza wa in testing his slaves in such a way and the same question can be extended for our Muslim brothers and sisters the the, the, the Uyghur Muslims who are being uh, tormented and persecuted and put into concentration camps by the Chinese uh, and also the question can be extended with regards to our brothers and sisters in Kashmir who have been uh, oppressed uh, by the uh, Indian government and the like can be said for many Muslims uh, being oppressed currently in different parts of the world um, Presently and in the past Why? What's the wisdom? So I wanted to um, go through a passage of Surah Ali Imran with you uh, And this passage is one where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling the believers Who have, who have, uh, who have, lost, who have lost and suffered injury uh, and defeat So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off by saying to them وَلَا تَهِنُوا do not become weak. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا And don't become sad. Don't become weak and don't become sad. It's not befitting for a believer to become weak physically and to become sad in his heart because you may have lost and you're being oppressed and you may have been defeated in battle but now you are adding to your difficulty by making your body weak by having weakness of body and weakness of heart. It's an external weakness that you're adding on top and it's an internal weakness that you're adding. No, don't be like that. Why? Because Allah said, Antum al You are going to have victory. You have the upper hand. You are going to come out on top. But there's a condition. In kuntum mu'minim. If you're indeed believers. If you're a true believer, you're going to come out on top. You're going to have the last laugh. As Allah said in another verse. Wal'aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. The final ending, the final outcome. is for the people of taqwa, for the people of piety. So don't become sad and don't become weak because Allah is going to give you victory. Allah is going to give you victory. Now this, what you've experienced, is just a loss. It's a wound. But this is not you having a loss completely. No. This is just a hiccup on the way. It's a hiccup. As Allah says in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Allah said, if you have experienced a wound, if you're suffering today, if you've been inflicted, Know that they have been afflicted as well. If you got injured today, know that they've been injured as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that don't think that they're not suffering. You today, all Palestinians are suffering. You today, all Kashmiris and you Uyghur Muslims. And wherever you are, all Muslims, you're suffering today at the hands of these oppressors. Don't think that they're free from suffering as well. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is ensuring that they are being inflicted too. Or they have been inflicted too. Does that make sense? But see, there's a difference. You see, when the believer goes through difficulty and gets afflicted, and the non-Muslim gets afflicted, they're not the same. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَهِنُوا فِي بِتِغَاءِ الْقَوْمِ إِن تَكُونُوا تَأْلَمُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ يَأْلَمُونَ كَمَا تَأْلَمُونَ Another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, If you feel pain, know that they feel pain. They feel pain the way that you feel pain. But you are hoping from Allah that which they don't hope. For them is the fire in hell. It will burn them. For you, inshallah ta'ala, is gardens of paradise, O believers. O believers who have been subjugated to oppression from these people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, if you feel pain, they feel pain. But for you, this pain leads to Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. For them, this, 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 this will take them to the hellfire. And then Allah consoles them further. He says, الناس, This world, Allah says, sometimes we give the victory, sometimes we give them victory. Sometimes we place the Muslims on top, sometimes we place the kuffar on top. That's what the dar of the dunya is like. You see, when you see Allah is trying to teach us a lesson here. In this world, you having the upper hand doesn't mean that you're special, nor does it mean that you're hated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the kingdom, He rather gives from His kingdom in this world. To righteous people, he gives it to non-righteous people. He gives it to pious people. He gives it to sinners. He gives it to just people. He gives it to oppressors. He gives it to Muslims. He gives it to kufar. But the next life is only for the believers. 
the next life is all of them gives. Hey, but like that, we give them the upper hand, we give you the upper hand. One day you have victory, one day they have victory. But the next life is only for the believers. So in there is actually two things that a person can find hope for. One is that inshallah next life will have complete victory inshallah ta'ala. But also in this life, we're not going to be subjugated forever. No, Allah changes it. I mean, take Jerusalem. Well, like Al-Quds is a perfect example. Palestine is a perfect example. At the time of the Prophet Sallallahu who governed it? The Romans governed it and these people, they were, you know, they, they, were, they were Jews and they were Christians there. Then Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he conquered it. And then after Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu conquered it after centuries and they snatched it from the Muslims. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, he brought Salahuddin al-Ayyubi rahmah rahma Allah ta'ala who came in with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal, he conquered it once more. Does that make sense? And then now what happened? Subhanallah al azim after centuries more, they snatched it back from the Muslims. And once again, it will happen that Allah will give it back to us. And that's how it is. I mean, look, for example, at Tehran. Look at Iran. It used to be a land of, land of Sunnah. Now it's a land of Tashayr in Arraf. Does that make sense? And look, look, we had Spain. It's gone. Don't worry. All these things will come back to the Muslims, inshallah ta'ala. It will all come back to the Muslims. But Allah Azza wa he does that. So know that you will have it back in this life, inshallah ta'ala. When Allah wills. And you have it, inshallah ta'ala, in the next life, definitely. In the light, you have victory. But the, now, 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 here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what's going on. You know, if they feel pain, you will feel pain. Sometimes you have victory, sometimes they have victory. But why, Ya Rabb? What is the wisdom? You've told us not to feel weak, that we will have the upper hand, you've told us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've also told us that if we feel pain, they will feel pain. And then sometimes we will have victory and they will have victory. But Ya Rabb, why? What is the wisdom? And Allah now tells us some wisdoms. He says, وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدًا The first thing Allah said, the reason why sometimes you're having victory and sometimes they're having victory and sometimes you're going through pain is so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it can become clear and He can make clear, He can make clear the true believers. Why? Because if Islam was on, in a constant state of victory, everyone would want to become Muslim. And people will become Muslim for the wrong reasons. And how would you know who's a true believer and who's a fake believer? How would you know who's a real believer and a fake believer? You see, a woman can wear niqab when everyone wears niqab. But when she's being attacked for wearing the niqab, is she going to take it off? A true believer will keep it on regardless. A man grows a beard because it's fashion. It's easy to grow a beard. But when people are telling him, take, shave your beard, he keeps it on. Despite the difficulty, he is a true believer. If everyone prays, if you get paid to pray, if the whole community prays, then how do you know who's really praying and who's not? No, no. The way is that when the prayer becomes difficult. So when the deen becomes difficult, when it's difficult to be a Muslim, when it's difficult to practice your deen, that's when a real believer sign, shine. And that's when the, the line becomes separated between the true believers and the false believers. So the first thing is, The second thing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes the believers lose sometimes so Allah can take martyrs. You see, a shaheed is from the greatest manazil, is, the greatest, is from the greatest ranks that a person can get with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from the greatest ranks that a person can get with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how do you become a martyr if someone doesn't take your life away? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the believers, Allah wants to give you a high station, high station in the next life as a shaheed. But the way that uh, the whole process of becoming a martyr in the battlefield, we're talking about the martyr on the battlefield, is that you are, you are killed in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some people will look at our brothers and sisters that are struggling and suffering. We say, inshallah. We can't say for certain because Allah knows that unseen. But we say, inshallah, they are martyrs. They are martyrs. They are martyrs dying in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you see? They are dying in the path of Allah azza wa jal. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in another, in another verse, فَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا وَأُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ وَأُوذُوا فِي زَبِيلِ وَقَاتَلُوا وَقُتِلُوا لَأُكَفِّرَنَّ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَلَأُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said those who were driven out of their lands, driven out of their places, driven out of their dwelling places, their lands, their houses, then they were harmed. And, and, and then they were killed. For them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to expiate their sins and He's going to give them paradise. 
So this is a way Allah is able to take martyrs. Does that make sense? Look at the beautiful wisdom. It's a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if He lets you be killed in this way, so that He can take you and give you high rank in paradise, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Allah la yuhibbu thalimin. Allah Azza wa He doesn't love the ones who oppress. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you another wisdom. Allah says, well, yumahis Allahu ladina amin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, He can purify the believers. There's another reason why they go through this difficulty. Purify, purify them from what? From sins. Purify them from the sins. Because when you go through difficulty, your sins get expiated. Does that make sense? And also to purify you from the false ones that are amongst you, which we've already mentioned. And then the, the fourth wisdom which is mentioned is وَيَمْحَقَ الْكَافِرِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can destroy the kuffar. So you can subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy them. That's what Allah says. A person may ask, how is them being destroyed a wisdom of them killing the Muslims? Because here the Muslims are the ones that seem like they're being destroyed. The kuffar don't seem like they're being destroyed. Because when the kuffar are destroying the Muslims, when they're killing the Muslims, when they're harming the Muslims, they are doing an evil sin. And this sin is a reason that Allah is going to give them a huge punishment. He's going to give them a huge punishment. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in another verse, وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ لِيَزْدَادُوا إِثْمَا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُّهِينٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't let the kuffar think that the fact that they're living here, that this is good for them. The fact that they, the fact that these Zionists and the fact that these Chinese and these and these and these Hindus are living oppressing our brothers and sisters in India, in China, and 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 uh, Palestine and in other places where the Muslims live, the fact that they're living and they and they're reigning and they and they're torturing the Muslims and, and the fact that they're living for long and they seem like they're strong, Allah said, don't let them think for a second that this is good for them. Rather, Allah said, in the manum lahum. Allah said the only reason that we're letting them live The only reason that we're extending their time Is so they can carry on increasing in sin Because the more they live The more they harm the Muslims The more sin they do And this means For them is going to be a disgracing A humiliating torment A punishment which is going to be extremely severe So these are the wisdoms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He mentions Number one he mentions subhanahu wa ta'ala so that the believers can become clarified from the disbelievers, the fake ones. This chance for the believers to shine, show Allah we're true believers at this time, holding on to our deen even though we're being oppressed. Number two, so then Allah Azza wa Jalla can take martyrs. Number three, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can purify the, the believers from the ones who are fake and also from the sins. And number four, it's a reason for Allah Azza wa Jalla to give the kuffar an even more tormenting punishment. So don't think for a, for a second that this is good for these for, 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 for them or that they're enjoying themselves. No. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says to the believers Am Am Jannah. Do you think that you're going to go to paradise? Allah said, Do you think you're going to get into Jannah without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing? Those who strive, those who do jihad, and those who have sabr, those who have sabr, those who have patience. And by the way, here, this is not a call to arms, and it's not me calling anyone to uh, violence or anything like that. We know that when it comes to matters of security and safety, we leave it to the ulama, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ وَلَوْ رُدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَى أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when there's the issues of safety and security, we take it to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and, and the scholars, the people of knowledge, because they tell the people what to do in these situations. So this is not me calling anyone to jihad. I'm just telling you what the verse is saying. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do you think that you'll go to paradise without you being tested in that way? Without you being patient? Without sabr? No. Or people of Palestine, or people, or Muslims of India, or... Uyghur Muslims in China, this is sabr. Allah is testing you because this is how you get to paradise. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ تَمَنَّوْنَ الْمَوْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ تَلْقَوْهُ Allah said, you wanted to be a martyr. Everyone wants martyrdom. Everyone wants the opportunity to die as a shaheed, right? Which Muslim doesn't want 
Which Muslim doesn't want to be a shaheed? What a great station. You want, if, you, if you say to someone, would you like to be a shaheed? Everyone will say, oh, I would love to have a station of a shaheed. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ تَمَنَّوْنَ الْمَوْتِ You wanted it, right? فَقَدْ رَأَيْتُمُهُ You wanted it before you met it. Now you're looking at it. فَقَدْ رَأَيْتُمُهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ You can see it right there. There you go. That's your chance. The reason I'm mentioning this is if there are any Palestinians who are watching, any Indian Muslims who are watching, any Chinese Muslims, or any Muslims that are suffering, don't become weak. Don't become sad. There is wisdom to this. And the final ending is for the believers. I end with the first verse that I mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to you, وَلَا تَحِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Don't become weak and don't become sad. وَلَا تَحِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَا You're going to have the victory. In kuntum mu'mineen If you are believers Make dua for our brothers and sisters Struggling all over the world Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik Ashadu la ilaha illa ant Astaghfirullah wa tawilu Assalamu alaikum Are you a believer? What is the proof of your iman then? There's a beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam In which he said Wasadaqatu burhan Charity is a burhan Burhan is translated as proof. But this is such a beautiful usage of the language that I must explain to you what the word Burhan means. You see, the Arabs would use the term Burhan to describe the rays of the sun. Because the sun is always there, but you only notice it when its rays reflect and shine down on the earth. And that's why the Arabs, if they wanted to talk about something which they called Hujjatul Qati'ah, a clear-cut proof, something that was a clear-cut evidence for something, they will call it a burhan. Describing this proof as if it was like the sun out in the sky, shining with all of its glory onto the earth. And that's the word they use to describe proof. A proof that's so clear that it's blinding you with how clear it is. And that's the word the Prophet wasallam chose to describe what charity does for the believer. You see, our iman is in our hearts, but also on our limbs. But a person on his limbs, he can be a hypocrite. He can be a munafiq. Charity is the thing that demonstrates that your iman is real. And if this is something that maybe didn't come to you before, and you didn't know how serious this concept was, I want to present you an opportunity that will help you. You see the same way when you want to invest in business, you want to give to a business that's going to bring you a greater return. When you want to give charity, you also want to give in a place that will give you a greater return. Is there a return that can be greater than spending your money in the path of da'wah, in the path of la ilaha illallah, where by funding da'wah projects, you are able to facilitate for people to come to la ilaha illallah. When that happens, you don't just get the reward of the money that you gave, but you get the reward of all that comes as a result of that money. The person comes to Islam, he learns wudu, he learns salah, he learns zakat, he learns siyam, he does it every day of his life for the rest of his life until he dies. He teaches his family members, he has kids, his kids have kids, the kids, kids have kids, all of that is on your scale. All because you gave what? Maybe 50 pound, maybe 100 pound, maybe less. Brothers and sisters, as you know, we have a da'wah project that we're running online and you guys have already seen the fruits that we've been producing with the tawfiq and the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to allow these da'wah efforts to continue we are in need of Allah azza wa jal of you guys to be a part of this click the link below and donate and this will inshallah ta'ala benefit you before it benefits the person who receives the da'wah with that said assalamu alaikum peace